fight for their lives. But this is what Joseph said to them, and this is great. It says, Joseph says to them, don't be afraid. I am I in the place of God. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. And that's our story of Joseph today. And you know, Joseph is a, an incredible illustration of what Jesus Christ is like. Because you know, this is exactly how Jesus has dealt with us. Jesus hasn't dealt with us harshly. It says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. You know, we deserve death because of our sin, but Jesus Christ has offered us eternal life. And Joseph could have de spelt death to his brothers, but he didn't. He offered them. He offered them all these blessings, and that's what Jesus does for us. So Joseph's family actually prospered in Egypt while Joseph was still alive. Conclusions. From the life of Joseph, we see examples about integrity. Christians should be, have lots of integrity. They should do the right things in life, the right things at work. Forgiveness. The guilt. Guilt. Guilt doesn't go away if it's not dealt with properly. Faith. Grace, free unmerited favor of God shown towards human mankind. That's what grace is. Joseph showed grace to his brothers. He did what God would have done. So let your hurts go and great. Look, the, the great, one of the great things about Joseph that I want us to learn today, that if you've got hurts and grudges in your life, you need to let them go. You know what? They will destroy you. They will drag you down. If you're a man, they'll make you a bitter, grumpy old man. How many men do you see like that? Old people, and they're just grumpy, and they've got grudges, and they moan, and they groan, and they so and say, so-and-so did this to me, and I can't forgive him, and I can't get over it. Someone put the chairs differently in the church. I'm, oh, you know, goodness me. Some of the things, the stories are pathetic. But, you know, it can grind you up, and you are the loser if you're holding grudges and hanging on to things. Joseph let it go. He said, God, I'll do what you want. Let it go. Let's move on. We've got to learn to do that in our lives. Don't hang on to grudges. Let it go. If you're, if you're in, in, in a marriage situation, don't hold grudges against your partner. Gosh, gosh, we all annoy each other sometimes. But don't hang on to it. Let it go. Move on. And um, that's what Joseph did. Charles Swindle, who I read his whole, he's written an amazing book on just on the life of Joseph. Fantastic book. I've read it just a couple of weeks ago, reading, getting ready for today. This is what he says are the three enduring lessons from this life that we need to remember. First, God works all things for his glory and our good. And anything that happens in our lives, and perhaps we mightn't like it, but you know what? God will grow us through those hardships. Grow, God can grow us through these bad times. God can grow us through... We can learn from things, and they might not be good things, but we can grow from them. When I used to do prison work, a number of guys, just about every course, six-week course we took down there, there was always at least one guy would say, coming to prison is the best thing that could have happened to me. They were bad times for those guys. They were in prison, but they grew through it. They matured. They grew. A lot of them committed their lives to the Lord or recommitted their lives to the Lord. So we need to realize this, that all the things that happen in our lives, God goes through those things with us, and we can grow from them. The second thing we learn from Joseph, and this is my main point that I want us to learn today, is that Joseph lived his life free of bitterness. And as so many people spoil their lives by being bitter. He lived his life free of bitterness despite everything that happened to him and the hard knocks that came his way. And thirdly, as Joseph faced death, he was right with both man and God. He had long ago made peace with his brothers. Joseph knew God as his Lord and Master and had done since he was a teenager. Joseph had the insurance so that at death he would be gathered to God's people. He would go to heaven, and in Jesus Christ, he will be in heaven now. And my question to you is, just as Joseph had a wonderful relationship with his God, I ask each one of us today, how is your relationship with God today? And only you can answer that. So um, that is my message from today. Let's just pray. Lord, today we just want to thank you for this life of Joseph. We thank you that Joseph showed so many of the qualities that you would have us show, Lord. 
He showed us what Jesus is like and how he loves and forgives and cares. And Lord, and doesn't bear grudges. And Lord, we just pray that you'll help us to, to, be, to be like you and to be like Joseph, to, to move on from the hurts in our lives. And Lord, today I'd pray for anyone who's going through bad times, just like Joseph went through so many hard times, Lord, and you were with him. And I just pray, Lord, that you will be with each person here today as we live our lives. Thank you now, Lord, and bless us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.